Hi, scientist Evelyn from the California Science Center, here to help you feel a little less stuck at home. If you've been following our activities this week, you may have noticed that we're getting pretty gross. And we are having you explore things that are usually pretty gross or make things that sound kind of gross. I absolutely love it because in everything that is kind of disgusting, there's kind of a beauty to it or some very, very helpful information. Now today I am live once again from the California Science Center and I am in our LA zone in the Ecosystems Gallery. And you may have noticed that yes, I really like the Ecosystems Gallery. Don't know why, just happens to be what I like. Now you can try and take a look at the things that I have behind me. I have a very special guest with us today. This cutout is of a mountain lion that some of you might know. We like to call it P22. Has anyone heard of P22? You might have, you might have seen it on the news. Now, anybody that's ever been to Griffith Park may have been in P22's habitat. We never really know what it's up to, but there are some scientists that are very, very interested in figuring out what is going on with P22. Now, scientists, one very amusing thing today is, as I am live, it seems like a cute little sparrow has gotten into the Science Center and it keeps perching behind me. Sometimes nature is just like that. What else can we do? But as it hangs out and looks adorable behind me, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. So we keep talking about scientists and scientists do lots of different things. Most of the time they're trying to figure out what is happening, what are some patterns, what do we know, what don't we know, how do we know that? And there is one type of scientist which we call a wildlife biologist who likes to figure out what is going on with nature. Now that is really, really broad, right? So I am going to use a wildlife biologist example that is a little closer to home. There is a wildlife biologist that goes out into different areas near Los Angeles that likes to figure out what is going on with animals that are living really, really close by. Now P22, or this mountain lion behind me, lives really close to us. And it's really different because we can kind of track where it was born and how it made it over to its new habitat, which is Griffith Park. Now we also can figure out what is going on, how much does it eat, what does it eat, how healthy, how not healthy is it doing? And are we as humans having any impact on that animal? Now that's just one example for this specific animal. But one way that we can figure out what's around us and what things are living near us is using poop or scat, as most scientists like to call it. Now, I actually have lots of scat in jars here at the Science Center, and I love to play a game that I call Scatagories. Now, you do need to have a little bit of background information to be able to play this, but if you come to the Science Center, you have someone like me that can help you out. Now, usually, I start off with some pictures and tell people, you know, there's animals that live nearby and they don't always want you to see them or know that they're there because we are big giant humans and sometimes we can be really, really scary, but they still need to eat and they still need homes in our area. Now, some of those animals might be really cute and really small and some of those animals might feel a little scarier, right? Now, as a wildlife biologist, you'd be really excited to find two things being left behind. You can take a moment. What do you think animals leave behind that let us know that they're there, but doesn't mean that we have physically seen them running around? And you might have some guesses. One of them is paw prints. Sometimes we can figure out what animals are there, how many of them are there by just looking for paw prints. Other times we can use something that's a little more gross, that scat that I mentioned. Ow. If you've practiced and had an opportunity to do stuff like this, you might see some scat and be able to identify what animal it belongs to. Now back to that background information that you might need. You kind of need to know what does that animal eat? What does it prefer to eat to be able to figure out what scat you're looking at? And I know sometimes we go on hikes, we go on walks, and we probably see a lot of scat laying around. Sometimes it might look like pebbles. Sometimes it might look 
really big, but if you look really close, you can probably see what this animal had eaten. And I love to explore and figure out, what do you know, what don't you know? Something that I get to see all the time is bunny scat. So I know what bunny scat looks like and I can use that to my advantage. Now, we don't have time to go through all of these and figure out exactly which one belongs, but the next time you get to visit the Science Center, maybe there'll be one of us here and you can play Scattergory with us. Now, scat tells us a whole lot about what an animal is eating and how healthy or not healthy it might be doing. So we don't need the animal physically in front of us to be able to tell what's going on. Depending on how much scat we find and a combination of other, other things in the environment, we can figure out what is going on. How many of these animals are there? Where does it like to hang out more often than others? Now, there are some animals that like to hide their scat, which makes things a little bit harder. Now, some of you might have some animals or some pets at home that spend all their time hiding their scat. And some other animals that don't care and just leave their scat out and about. Now scientists, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I hope you're feeling a little less stuck at home. Bye scientists. Be sure to visit our website Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. for more stuck at home science activities.